This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, at the uh, end of the uh, last lecture, I said when uh, the accountant's preparing the financial statements, uh, there are standardly four adjustments uh, that uh, need to be made. Uh, well, in this lecture, I'm going to go through the first of them, uh, which is uh, accruals and prepayments. And to explain what they are, first of all, uh, prepayments, um, I'll explain uh, by example, so I hope you've got the notes printed out in front of you. Uh, and look at example one. Uh, I say I'll use example one to explain what prepayments are uh, and how we deal with them in the uh, financial statements. So have a read of it with me. Uh, Karen started business on the 1st of January 2000. During the year to 31st December 2000, she made the following payments for insurance. On the 5th of January, she paid $800, and that was for the six months to the 30th of June 2000. Uh, on the 15th of June, she has to pay another $2,000. And that's for the 12 months to the 30th of June 2001. So it's fairly common with things like insurance uh, that here when she's paying insurance, we what we say, pay it in advance. Uh, in that, as you can see, in January, she's paying for January through to the following June. So she's paying at the beginning of the year period. She's then insured for six months. And then in June, okay, she pays 2000 But that's for the 12 months right the way through to the 30th of June in the following year. And so um, her year end is, um, where are we, 31st December. And so the cash she's paid... Over her accounting year, now on the 5th of January she paid 800. On the 15th of June she paid another 2,000. So the total cash paid is 2,800. However, what's important for our financial statements, in the statement of profit or loss, we know, need to know the cost of insurance for our year and that 2,800, that's the cost of insurance Oh, for the six months to June, June 2000 and the 12 months to June 2001. That's a lot more than her accounting period. For the statement of profit and loss, we need to know the expense for her year, which is 1st of January 2000 through to 31st December 2000. We need to know how much the insurance is costing for that period. So not how much cash has been paid, we'll worry about that after, but how much is it actually costing her to insure for those 12 months, January through to December 2000. Well, look at those payments again. We know how much the first six months cost. From January 2000, through to the 30th of June 2000. That was that first bill she paid. So those six months are costing her 800. Uh, what's the cost of the rest of her year? Well, from the 1st of July to the end of her year, which is 31st December, I need to know how much those six months are actually costing. July, December, count on your fingers if you need it, it is six months. Well, the next bill she paid, she did pay 2,000, but that was for 12 months. From the 1st of July, right the way through to June 2000, uh, 2001. And well, we only need to know the cost for, for those six months there. She's paid 2,000 for 12 months, so 6 months out of 12 the cost for those 6 months is 1,000 and so forget what she's actually paid for the moment 
the cost of insuring for her 12 months, 800 for the first six, 1,000 for the next six, uh, in total, 1,800. And that's the expense for the year. That, I'll show you the debits credits after, but that's the expense in the statement of profit or loss. But what about uh, the rest of what she paid? She actually paid 2,800 this year. Why she paid more? It's because effectively she's overpaid or what we say prepaid or prepayment. Prepayment in a sense is the overpayment. And why is she overpaid? Well, remember, her year-end finished on the 31st of December 2000. But she's actually paid all the way through to June of the following year. So she's pre prepaid the period from 1st of January 2001 through to 30th of June 2001. She's paid it this year. But it's not actually a cost of this year. She's already paid six months of next year. And how much has she overpaid? Well, it, it's part of that 12 month bill of 2000. She's overpaid six months. And so the amount overpaid six twelfths of 2000, well, that's the other thousand. Of the 2,800 cash she paid, 1,800 was this year's expense, the expense in this year's statement of profit or loss. Uh, the remaining 1,000 is an overpayment, a prepayment. She's paid in advance. That's actually part of next year's cost. Well, when we come to do the statements, the financial statements at the end of uh, her year, December 2000, we've already said in the statement of profit or loss, we have the expense for the year 1800. What about the overpayment? Well, as at the end of December 2000, she has overpaid. And in theory, if she closed down at the end of the, uh, December, the insurance company I'd have to repay that overpayment. So effectively, it's like a receivable. The insurance company owes us that thousand overpayment at the end of December. Well, although it's like a receivable, of course, the insurance company, we're not going to close down, so the insurance company won't pay us the money back. It'll just mean that next year, well, we've already paid six months. We won't be paying any more for the first six months. And so, although they do owe us the money and it's like a receivable, we actually call it a prepayment. Uh, but just like receivables, it'll, uh, it'll appear on the statement of financial position. It'll appear under the heading current assets. A prepayment of a thousand. So there we are, part A. It says show extracts from the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position. And questions on this will only be asking effectively this little bit on its own. Obviously, there's lots of other things happening in the business. Uh, but they'll want to know either what's the expense going to be in the statement of profit or loss, it's 1800. And, or, uh, how much is the prepayment, the overpayment, the receivable in a sense, in the statement of financial position? And that, uh, of course, is a thousand. So there we are. I hope it makes sense, but vitally important, always, whatever's happening, what we want in the statement of profit or loss is the cost for our year. Here we've paid more, but the cost of insuring for this year was 1800 If we have overpaid or paid in advance, paid part of next year, the amount of the overpayment or the prepayment is our current asset.
in the statement of financial position. So there we are. Now I will show you how that um, works in the T accounts. I have to show you, and you can be tested on the entries. However, in, in your exam, you can't be asked to actually write up T accounts. Um, and so, although you need to know the double entries, and again, I'm about to show you, for most questions, T accounts aren't necessary. You know, you could be asked uh, just part A of this. What will appear in the step to balance prison? What will appear in the uh, step to profit and loss? But we didn't need any T accounts. Doing T accounts, if they weren't asked for, would be wasting time. However, for completeness, let me show you the T accounts, how it would actually work. So we'll start all over again. And first of all, let's play at being bookkeeper. On the 5th of January, we pay 800. Well, what does the bookkeeper do when we pay 800? The bookkeeper credits cash, debits, what is it? Insurance. Credit cash, debit insurance, 800. Now, I'm not going to write up a cash account um, because, of course, there'll be lots of other things happening which we don't know about. I'm only concerned with insurance. So we'll imagine credit cash, we pay cash, debit insurance. Um, later in the year, 15th of June, we pay 2000. Bookkeeper, whenever we make a payment, credit cash. Debit insurance, 2000. The bookkeeper's job is to record every payment. Um, it's irrelevant to the bookkeeper what, when you, what you're paying the insurance for, what months it's for. If we pay 2000, we enter 2000. We come to the end of the year and the bookkeeper's finished. And if you remember from the previous chapter, the accountant effectively appears and takes a balance. The balance on the account is 2,800. And if we were doing a trial balance, which we're not, you know, we're only an extract here, uh, but 2,800 would appear on the trial balance. It's then in the bookkeeper's job, uh, sorry, the accountant's job rather, to close off the accounts. And what do we normally do with insurance? Normally, of course, if you look to the last chapter, insurance is an expense. We move it to the statement of profit and loss. However, the accountant, before they do that, has to make sure we've paid to eight. Is any of that prepaid? And of course it is. I know we've already do, done the workings, but the accountant will calculate the prepayment. He or she will look at that last invoice and say, ah, that 2000 we'd paid all the way through to June of next year. And so the prepayment was six months of that 2000 as we had before, it's a thousand. And so we know we've paid to eight, but we know a thousand of that is effectively an overpayment. And so what the accountant will do, they'll take out a thousand of that. They'll say a thousand of that isn't this year's expense at all. So the accountant will credit insurance with a thousand to take out the overpayment and open a new account called prepayments. And the double entry, credit insurance to remove the thousand which isn't this year's expense and debit prepayments. A thousand with the amount of the overpayment. And now we can finish off in the normal way. How much is left on insurance? 
debit to eight, we've already credited a thousand to take it out. What's left is 1800. And as usual for an expense, um, we'll move it to the uh, statement of profit or loss. Credit insurance, debit statement of profit or loss. Uh, and the, whoops, the account balances. Again, I'm not going to show a statement of profit or loss T account. You saw what it looked like uh, in the last chapter, but I'm not going to show it here because clearly we are only looking at one expense. There'll be lots of other expenses in the statement of profit or loss, but we don't know what they are. So that finishes the insurance account. The balance is zero, ready for next year. Uh, what about the prepayments account? Well, we've a debit balance. It's an asset. It's just like a receivable. That'll appear on the statement of financial position. I've already we've already shown the extract. It'll appear as a current asset. And as always, uh, with statement of financial position items, we'll leave the balance there. Just like in the last chapter, we left the balance on receivables. We left the balance on the car account, and so on. And so there we are. But bear in mind what I said. You cannot be asked to write up T-accounts in this exam. They could just test that you know what the entries are, and I've shown you the entries, which is the correct entry, you know, debit this account, credit this account, or debit this account, credit this account, and so on. Most questions, though, will want to know what is the expense, what is the overpayment. Uh, and you don't need T-accounts to work that out. I showed you before, I'm not going to repeat it, but there we are. All right, well, I hope that makes sense. I don't think that's too bad. However, and although I'll stop this lecture here, then it doesn't get too long. Uh, I do need to show you what happens next year. Then you've got the full story. So keep hold of this example. If you need to, go back, you know, watch the lecture again and make sure you've got it. Uh, but otherwise, in the next lecture, we'll take the same example, Karen, and we'll see what happens next year in 2001.